Greetings, rink rats, and welcome to season four, episode 11 of the Blackhawks Rinkcast. Coming to you live from the Puck Hockey Studios and brought to you by Puck Hockey, our founding and an official sponsor since 2017. Head over to puckhockey.com, P U C K H C K Y.com, and check out the latest in hockey themed apparel and gear. Really cool stuff, beautifully designed and well made. Look for that rink custom line. Um, where you can also use the rank discount code at anything you find at Puck Hockey, not just our stuff. T H E R I N K, get 10% off. They're really good people, really good stuff. Bye. Um, I am your host for tonight's festivities, John Jekyll, better known across the interwebs as JJ or that Jekyll guy. With me tonight are two of the usual suspects. We've been uh, having a difficult time locating Rene Bientech. He's out there somewhere slagging off uh, Ian Mitchell or uh, Justin Fields, and he's going to be proven wrong about that. Uh, but I do have with me tonight Andy Campbell from, from Boston, Massachusetts. What's up, everybody? How we doing? Ready to talk some trade deadline stuff? Good right work, on. Stan. Right on. And also, the blogger to be named later, Sean Fitzgerald, also known as Sean Goldstein. Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight's hat selection is part of the new era. Um, for those watching the... Uh, Indian head is in the Chicago flag colors. There's also a Chicago flag on the side and on the brim. So, um, also I want to issue an apology. I called Brett Connolly Brent. Uh, Eric Andrews made sure to point that out uh, last week. So, sorry, Brett. Connelly. The editor. Yep. Well okay. done. Well, I, I, I couldn't I, let I couldn't let it go either. I, I had to go. I had to go. The one cane shirt. It finally showed up in the mail. Um, those of you that have seen this before, apparently it was a limited edition. The only person you may have seen it on is Dylan Strom. I think we all agree who looks better in this thing right now. Um, and, and perhaps a little bit more cut. So uh, you're a little more jacked than he is. <laughs> but anyway, love Kaner, love this shirt. Very excited for it. Uh, Dylan Strom, who is uh, in competition with Mac Jones for the most wussified professional athlete in the world. But I will, again, I'm not digressing into college football here. You guys can tell I've got a little bit of a resentment about the draft, but uh, maybe we'll get to that another time in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, tonight we are going to do a rapid fire show. We've got one topic tonight and we are going to nail it. You've heard the rest. Now hear the best on the Blackhawks trade deadline. Um, so Stan Bowman had what many feel, and I think we all generally agree. Uh, was a was a good trade deadline. I think I think um, I think the theme of our show tonight is going to be, you know, what were the expectations going in? What should have been the expectations going in, um, and how well did he fulfill them? Um, you know, let's dive right into it. I'm going to turn this over to Andy. Yeah, uh, Andy, what is your take? Feel free well, to expand. I, yeah, Stan Bowman did what he had to do. Okay, and 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 that's that's where I'm at. I think that you know when when the season began. Um, you know, we had, had those early injuries. We figured the Hawks weren't going to be a very strong team. The whole idea behind the season was, you know, showcase guys like Soderberg and guys like Yanmark and make sure that you get a return out of that. And Stan did it. And it wasn't, you know, it's not glamorous. It's not flashy. Um, basically, he took movable assets to sell them, send them to cup contending teams. In return for a few lottery tickets, you know, some players that may pan out, may not pan out, um, you know, a couple scratch tickets there every now and then you, you strike it rich. And then some draft picks, which is awesome. He is entering, the Blackhawks are entering right now the 2021 draft with nine picks, nine times, which is awesome. So they right now heading into the draft now have a first rounder, two second rounders, two fourth round picks a fifth round pick, a sixth round pick, two sevens, and then an additional third for next year. I'm sorry, they actually don't have a fifth round pick this year. They just dealt that, didn't they? They did, yes. They yeah. did, okay. Matias so and Mark trade. So in difference to Ed Rooney, eight picks. We don't have a good slogan. We did the nine times. Ed Rooney, Ferris Bueller, love you. Eight picks, not nine. But regardless, what, what the best part about that is, though, is you're going into an expansion draft now. And you've got, you're playing with house money. I mean, you have some chips, some bargaining chips at the table, you know, and now I, I, I'm very curious as to see what he's going to do with this. Um, you either, you know, roll it out, you pick those players, you use those picks, or you use those as bargaining tools to move players and actually try to improve the team. If it was me, you know, what I would love to see happen 
is for him to use some of that leverage with the picks that he has and maybe move a player and try to get deeper down the middle. Say it. Say it. Say it. What, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? Oh. Dylan Strome. No, no, no. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to him later. We'll get to him later. No, no, no. <laughs> no, but I, they, do need to get, they do need to get deeper down the middle. They do. Um, so, and, and, I, and I still don't think that Stan um, – is just going to blow it up all of a sudden, which is, you know, what I think that a lot of people want to see and, you know, see, see some more, some bigger moves. But, um, you know, now that, you know, he's, he's got a few pieces and some players that came in, I mean, the Gaudette trade, I wasn't thrilled about it over Twitter when it happened, the Highmore deal, because I actually thought that might've been the only thing happening that day. And so that's why I think I was sour, uh, but Gaudette could be, could be a decent return. And, you know, the Highmore deal, Imore's a nice player, but I don't really think they were getting much out of him. He really didn't fill fill a role that much with the team. I've gone way too far, way too much. Shawnee, you're up. Clearly, my coffee kicked in. Andy, I don't have all day to bark at you, so I'm going to make this short and sweet. <laughs> I want my daughter outside. No, sorry. That was that was my uh, Cameron Fry doing. That was a damn good Cameron Fry. Thank you. Wow. Thank John you. Hughes himself would be so thrilled to hear that. I'm glad that's that that's probably good. the best impression I could do. <laughs> it would be. Um, yeah, I thought Stan Bowman did fine. We moved assets. We knew we were going to move. Um, we got a couple of prospects, some draft picks, which I was really excited about the draft picks, like the second and third rounder for Matias Yanmark and the fifth rounder. But then I kind of, after we had a little Twitter discussion about it, I kind of uh, delved a little deeper into that. And Dauber Prospects, um, his name, he's a scout now for the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, Jokey Navalainen, that's his Twitter handle. He broke down the simplified NF NHL draft probabilities, and he looked at 2000 to 2009, and he broke it down. So if you're a second-round pick from 32 to 62, in that time frame, you had a 35% chance of playing in the NHL. And then a third round pick was 25%. Right. And then he guesstimated for 2020, he said, now, obviously we'll just take this for 2021. He was still right around the same 35 and 30%. Yeah. So I'm excited that they, the more assets you have, the more bites of the apple you have. Yeah. If it was Steve Eiserman pulling the trigger on these picks, I'd be over the moon, yeah. but it's Dan Bowman. <laughs> and the last second <laughs> round pick that panned out was Alex Dabrinkit. Yeah. And in that draft, he had two picks, and he picked Chad Cries with that second pick. With Chad Cries injured again, probably not going to see the NHL. I, I don't think so. Or if he does, it'll be with a different organization, which if that's the case, he wasted the pick. So I thought it was good. I thought it was fine. But I've kind of delved deeper into it, and I'm like, I'm not over the moon like everybody was. And I think John, John and I kind of agree on that. I, I'm not over the moon about Adam Gaudet. Um, and you moved Yanmark, Walmark, Soderberg, three guys on one of your deals that you knew you were going to, you, you signed them to trade them. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I had a, um, and I, it's sort of flavors of both what both of you guys have said. Um, and we're going to come back around on this a couple of times tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I had a I had a blog written at the point that um, that they had really just um, you know gotten Henestrosa and I believe I believe it was Goddad at that point. Mm -hmm. I, I had written a, a blog that was just just torching Bowman for not doing anything, and I I did this kind of side by side comparison with what Yarmo Kekalainen had done with the Blue Jackets, and I think it's I do think it's worth saying. I mean, I feel like Bowman got an A plus at an offshore chiropractic college, meaning. He did really well in terms of the strategy he was trying to execute, which was to move spare parts and, you know, overruns and whatever you want to call these guys and just get assets. And he did. And he did it. I think he did a pretty nice job with it. You know, Twitter is always just so like like the reactions on Twitter are always just like to one extreme or another. And they're just ridiculous. I mean, I've never seen people get more excited about a second round draft pick in my life. And I mean, Sean, you just said it the odds of a second round draft pick making the NHL are far less than 50%. Um, so, and, you know, we don't know what kind of player that's going to be. And I just remember all the years of following the Blackhawks drafts 
And, um, you know, all the second round draft picks over the years who, who everybody just thought like Akeem Alou, Bill Sweat, um, Igor Makarov. I mean, it just goes on and on and on the list of guys that everybody got really excited about and this never panned out. And um, so it's, it is possible that, you know, this pick that was acquired in the Yanmark deal or the both of the picks that were acquired in the Yanmark deal could pan out, but it's actually more likely they won't. But all that said, it is good to accumulate just as many lottery picks as you can, because the truth of the matter is these guys are drafted at 17 years old in hockey. It's a little bit like baseball and there's time for them to develop. And there's also time for them not to develop. Um, so the thing, but the thing about it is, and I guess this is where I, I net out on it is that I feel like the Blackhawks and I still feel this way are their strategy, which is coming down from ownership is to sort of half rebuild. You know, they're not tearing down. They're not trading the, the bigger name, higher price veterans that could really bring back the first round draft picks um, or a high first round draft pick or two in the case of, let's say, if you dealt a Patrick Kane. Um, so what they're doing is they're still trying to do this dance of we're going to keep Kane, we're going to keep Keith, and we're going to try to rebuild around them so we could get back to glory. My personal feeling is, is that by the time you've got enough of the pieces and parts and the supporting cast you need with those guys to get back, those guys are going to be done or close to it. And I've always felt it's a flawed strategy. And I think it's really about just selling tickets in the short term. Cause I think Danny Wirtz is more like his grandfather than, than a lot of people probably want to realize, or they don't remember the days of Bill Wirtz. Um, you're lucky if you don't remember him um, as a Hawk fan. So I, I do think Bowman did a good job with the hand he was dealt. Bowman does not set the strategy going into the deadline. He doesn't. The organization does. You know, and this organization, again, has not committed to fully rebuild. What Kekalainen did with Columbus, that was more reflective of more of a full-on rebuild. They, they traded one of their best defensemen, a guy in his prime. Um, they got a first-round pick for him. I think they got a first and another pick for Savard, actually. And then they traded uh, uh, Nick Foligno, their captain. Um, who's like kind of the heart and soul of the, of the team. Um, and they got a first for him. And I'm not sure, but I think they might've gotten something else for him too. And, and, uh, and they're probably going to get him back a la baseball <laughs> reference, Sidney yeah. Ponson. Yeah. If you yeah. remember that one where he yeah. was hey, you traded. Men yeah. You mentioned yeah, I mean, uh, Donnie, uh, Steve Eisenman. I mean, look at what he got from Mantha. That's a haul. Oh my yeah. gosh. That they got yeah. from Mantha. That's unbelievable. And, yeah. and that's the bottom line. When you, when you, you know, you in, in hockey, generally speaking, yeah, we, you know, Hawk fans can remember the deal where we got Patrick Sharp, you know, or when we got uh, Christopher Stieg for Brandon Bochensky, et cetera. But generally speaking, and you know, the thing about Gaudet, I, yeah, I mean, He's got the great shot. You know, there's, there's some argument that they, that Vancouver wasn't using him right. But I also read some things where Gaudette was complaining about his role and a guy, a young guy like that who complains about his role may complain about his role wherever he goes, you know, yeah. and we're just going to have to see And All these guys, uh, Stillman, the younger guys that he recorded, Stillman, Gaudette, um, Rolston, et cetera. We're just going to have to see, um, you know, whether they could develop or a change of scene or a change of organization will help them. Typically, it, it doesn't. I mean, the, again, the odds are against it because, you know, who those guys are goes with them as opposed to, you know, the change of scenery magically changing them. So we're going to have to see. But I give Bowman high marks as, you know, just again, I'm trying to sort of be fair and put it all out there in context and in a, in a realistic context. I give Bowman high marks for, for basically taking stuff that is not going to be part of the picture in Chicago, you know, in two years and getting something for it. I think it's great. We, but it just, all the, the victory laps and the people rushing to, you know, blow smoke up stands, you know what, on Twitter, stop, because you don't know, you just, none of this, you don't know how, how good any of this is going to be, if at all. Andy, what do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, I, Boy, I was really excited about five minutes ago. Now, now I'm really, really sad. <laughs> I have a gift for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, we, we don't know, like you said, I mean, we have no idea what any of these picks are going to turn out. I mean, in, in the 10 years, you know, in the 10 plus years that Stan Bowman's been drafting, maybe with second round picks, he's hit on two of them. Right. And one was DeBrinken and one was Brandon Saad. Yep. I mean, and, and you can look back at his first draft in 2010 when yep. he had four first round picks and that was Ludwig Rensfeld 
Yep. Justin Hall, Kent Simpson, and Steven Johns. Yep. And Johns um, is, is a pretty good player. Johns is a pretty good player. Hall is a decent player. I mean, he's yeah, well, yeah, Hall is a guy. In the games. Um, you know, and guys like Adam Clendenning, kind of meh. You know, that, that yep. didn't work out so well. Dylan Fournier, who knows what he's yep. up to now. Uh, he's so, probably still rehabbing his shoulder because it's, yeah. it's chronically injured. Yeah. Right. Gr- Graham not. I mean, that didn't work out as a second. <laughs> Graham not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then Sorry, you know, myself. Ian Mitchell around, you know, um, he's he's a second round pick. And then, you know, we still I, I do still like last year's second round pick with Camesso. I thought that was a really good choice, you know, getting a goaltender in there. But, you know, like I said, though, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going back to this now is, is those are still chips to play. Those right. are still chips to play. And, and if you're not going to do a real rebound, a rebuild and a teardown, you've got an expansion draft coming up. You know, premium picks you've got available to move if you want to move some parts and you have opportunities to better your team if that's your intention and they need to do it in the middle of the ice. You know, you've got you've got a decent set of wingers, decent, now, hence on decent, not hence, but emphasis on decent. You know, a lot of young defensemen that you want around that you're trying to, you know, make sure that, you know, they're going to be part of this thing. Center is so weak with the Chicago Blackhawks organization right now. What? They've got nothing up the middle of the ice. And so, you know, even with some of these young prospects in these picks, if you're saying, look, we're still trying to squeeze out every ounce of hockey out of Keith and out of Kane. And yeah, we're just going to miss the playoffs this year. And we still want to try to better it, make a run for it. We've got all this, you know, LTIR space heading into next year and some cap space. You got to move some of this stuff and you got to get deeper in the middle of the ice. Yeah. If that's, if that's what you want to do. And if you, if you hold on to these picks and you actually use them, then you're actually committing to a rebuild without moving your primary assets. And that almost doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Right. So right. that's why it's like, if you're going to do this kind of half rebuild, then, then we're not done here. Right. And, and I think it's going to be a very busy draft for Stan Bowman, which actually has me very excited because that's, that's a really cool time of year to be following the Hawks. Sean. Yeah. The, the half measure if there's, if you're not going to trade one of your blue chip players for a blue chip prospect or other player, younger players in return, you're, you're kind of just, um, you're kind of stuck in neutral here. You're, you're not really committing either way, regardless of what language you're telling people. You're telling people it's a rebuild, but you basically just shuffled around expiring contracts and brought back the one prospect you brought back, Henrik Borstrom that you, we know of has already played 58 games in the NHL. So maybe the book's already complete on that. If you, if you really want to rebuild, you, um, you have to approach Patrick Kane or Duncan Keith and go, yeah. okay, look, this is, this is our plan. This is what we're going to do. We'd like you to waive your new movement clauses and we'll try to trade you where you'd like to go. Yeah. And be, that's, on, and be honest with them. Be like, we don't think we can do it while you're still here. Right. Yeah. Right, we really don't think we can. I mean, I don't. Doesn't Stan look at Iserman and look at Anthony Mantha and be like, "Okay, Steve Iserman just got two pretty good NHL players, a first round pick and a second round pick for Anthony Mantha." And I'm not saying Anthony Mantha is not a bad. He's not a bad hockey player. He's a really good prospect. He's going into a great situation in Washington. But don't you look at Patrick Kane after that and you go, "Whoa, like what? What would be the return?" Right. Exactly. And I, I mean this in all sincerity. I don't think Stan Bowman, the guy sitting there saying, I, I don't want to do a real rebuild. I think his boss is telling him, you will not no. move these assets. No, and they, they, need, they need to fill seats next year. They need to sell tickets. You need 88 jerseys everywhere you go in the city. Right. And I get that. It's a business. You right. know, and here's the thing that's going to happen is eventually, at some point, the organization is going to look at it and say, okay, this has not worked. We've continued to bleed corporate sponsors. We've continued to bleed demand for tickets. We're, we're going to have to make some bigger moves. I, I still think eventually they are going to do it. You can just hope it's not after these assets have lost that much value. Right. Is it going to be too late? Are they going to move Patrick Kane at the end of his contract where, yeah, I mean, right. he's, a, he's still freakishly good right now, but who knows what in the future holds? Are you, are you pushing back your... Are you pushing back your rebuild even farther? Well, because... and you might get a lot. You might get a lot less for him too if you move right, him exactly. as opposed to a contract player. I mean, right, so. exactly. Like you've got to, yeah. 
you're, What's you're he paid up through what 2023 or 2024 23 23 so that's not that far away yeah yeah they're so, yeah. go ahead sorry i think they're they're they are past the tipping point though with there's an expiration date on every core and we're yeah. past that expiration date oh, yeah. now oh, yeah. so we're well past it so now it, you've got to look at it like hey i i've said this like recently, like I would trade these guys now, like this year and maybe even going into this off season, because there's regardless of filling seats, there's still going to be limited capacity theoretically when we come back and people are going to be so excited just to go to games when, when you're allowed back in the arena, because uh, Chicago said that the bulls and the Blackhawks are not a priority to let people in this year. So I'm going to go to a game at least one or two when we can go back. Oh yeah. But at this point, if you want to like full on get the rebuild out of the way and hope your young guy, the guys you get back are ready to be your stars when the building can be full again, why not start now? Right. Especially when there was nobody in the building last year and there's nobody in the building this year. Well, and they also, I don't, I, this, you know, the, the fact that they're still in the playoff chase right now, I mean, it almost, it's a, it's a mirage. I mean, it makes them look better than they are. When you look at them statistically, they are dismal. They're not taking. They, they, got they, just, they just finished the first period and with a whopping three shots on goal against Detroit. I mean, yeah, they, they got lucky earlier in the year. I mean, their their power play was you know way overperforming. Their rookie goalie was overperforming. I still think he's going to be a good player, and, and he already is a good player. Yeah, I like but, that. Um, and also they were benefiting from three on three overtime, which you know they've gotten by relatively on in the regu regular season. You know, I, I will give Bowman credit for this too. Um, it, you know, it seemed to me when when he dealt two of his remaining reasonably credible NHL centers at the deadline, it signaled to me he's not really that care. He doesn't care that much about the playoffs. And you know what? He shouldn't. He shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You know, because while while uh, Columbus was out there acquiring two first round draft picks and I believe at least one second. Um, you know, they're all, they also have better draft position at this point than, than the Hawks do. And, you know, I mean, I, so I applaud Bowman for that. Cause I, you know, you're right, Andy, this team is so bad down the middle. They were bad down the middle before the trade deadline and they're worse today because they lost Soderberg, <laughs> right. who's yeah. arguably their, their most credible center. Dylan Strom's not a center. No. Um, it remains to be seen if Kirby Doc is, I mean, I, I again, I, I probably am bogged somebody's high out there, but um, he may he may well be a great center in the NHL. It's just too early to tell. I, mean, I don't even think Pia Suter's probably not a center. Yeah, and, he, might, uh, he might be on the wing at some point. I mean, it's just yeah, not, yeah. And so. with the centers in the West, you those you know guys like Shifley, and to the extent Kopitar still has some tread on the tire, and you know there's just these big bruising yeah. centers, and and you know to play center in the NHL, you you've got you've got to be reasonably strong physically and you've got to be able to defend up and down the ice and skate and you know i just the only guy they have who's credible in, in terms of being a prospect or a projectable center is doc that's right. it right and that's you you need three or four of those guys <laughs> i don't i don't and it's pretty bare in rockford yeah down, down the middle of the ice it's just not really i mean barrett yeah. won't be a center yeah you know, i mean it's just not it's uh yeah it's it's, it's pretty glaring yeah. I mean, it, with, with their number one overall pick, not number one overall, excuse me, with their first round draft pick, take the best center in the draft, period. I mean, I really, I don't, I don't, I really hope there's not like some sort of really crafty winger, or, you know, with their, I mean, they'll, they'll pick what, somewhere in between like 11 and 16 or something like yeah. that. And I'm going to say something else about Bowman. Again, I'm yeah. saying a lot of really positive stuff about Bowman. No, Bowman. I'm, I'm the Mr. Negativity out on the night. What's, yeah. what's the deal there? Your turn. Um, Bowman, Bowman in 2013 went out before, before the, the playoffs and got Michael Hanzus. Yeah. Michael Hanzus was, you know, was not the sexiest player in the world, but what Michael Hanzus was, was a big rugged centerman who could win 55% plus in the dot yeah. was hard as hell to play against. Um, and a reasonably versatile, versatile guy who could chip in in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And he helped the Hawks win a cup in 2013. 2015, exactly. same thing. Right before the deadline, he goes out and he gets Antoine Vermette, a true yep. NHL center, a 55% plus faceoff guy. So Stan Bowman knows the value of centers. Oh, yeah. Well, Bowman, he, got, he got Brad Richards right before that season, too. Yeah. Same yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, 
so he, he Andy, I agree with you. I think he does have a plan, and I am I am excited to see it. And I, I just think Hawk fans need to kind of hold on to their seats and give this some time because it's going to take some yep. time. They're much further away than all the ass clowns on Twitter are, are want to believe. They are <laughs> further away. Um, but I actually think Bowman, I am encouraged by what Bowman's doing. Sure, he makes mistakes. But you know what? As long as you go out and you correct your mistakes as a GM, because all GMs make mistakes, but sure. it's the ones who correct them who end up, you know, winning. And uh, let, let's see what he can do um, with with all these picks and and players and prospects he's, he's accumulated, um, and see what he does with the, in the draft and before the draft with some trades. Because I have a feeling that maybe one or two of these remaining veterans get, may get moved before the yep. draft. There's going to be a lot of action leading up to the draft especially with, with, with the expansion draft. draft coming out and you don't unfortunately ron francis doesn't have the benefit that george mcphee did going into the because george mcphee essentially like gamed the entire nhl with that expansion draft yeah, he, he, he made yep. he made everybody look stupid and he was the yep. smartest guy in the room now ron francis unfortunately being the second most recent expansion team doesn't have the opportunity to do that because everybody's going to be wary of what george mcphee did right so but there's going to be moves like Brett Connolly could be moved. Um, yep. There's going to be moves. And I will give Stan Bowman credit. All his moves were forward thinking. They weren't for right. future thinking. They weren't about this year, even getting Brett Connolly. It wasn't about this year. It was about year, or years down the road mm -hmm. by getting Borkstrom and getting other players in that deal. So Borkstrom is a guy also who potentially projects as an NHL center, probably a third liner. Right. Um, hey, and this, we need it. I will take, take it. it. Yeah, take right. It. Not guaranteed, but he, but he projects that way. And yeah. I think the other thing is, is that Bowman is going to have to take some assets, you know, be they NHL assets or perhaps uh, prospects as well. And he's going to have to package some things because second round picks are not going to, you can't rebuild on second round picks. He's no. gonna, he needs some elite talent. Right. And yeah. Defense and yes, defense and at center. Um, because again, I, I just don't on this defense. I, I just don't see any exceptional young players, with the exception possibly of Boquist. Um, I think Bodin, he's okay. He may end up being a pretty decent player. Yeah, but, I, I don't. I think he'll fall out of favor with Colleton, and it feels like he already has. Which yeah, really Colleton for whatever reason he's just not, uh, not into him. He's so. not. No, but he, he, I, he, Colleton is first impressions i don't like you and i'm not i'm never going to give you a second chance colin delia and Hen henrik yoki haru and now nicholas bodan you mean yeah. like joe quenville yeah right exactly you mean like john tortorella oh well I but mean, i'm just saying well those are guys who win those are guys who yeah. win in the nhl i mean you know i again i'm i guess but, I'm but really they have but they they have one thing that Jeremy Colleton doesn't have. They have pedigree of winning. Jeremy Colleton doesn't doesn't have anything like that. He doesn't no, have any of that credibility. So he yeah. shouldn't be making decisions like that. Yeah, no. I'm drawing the line at, at being positive about Stan Bowman. I'm not going to no, do no, that. I, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, JJ. I'm sorry, I totally cut you off, but I don't, as far as that young D, I mean, who of these D are going to be elite? Right. And none. Probably none. Probably none. Yeah, both <laughs> Focus has the potential, and I mean, he just like if he if he can stay out of the dark room, um, you know, with concussions because he's this is like his third, I think. Just getting um, beat, up. and uh, so he's he's going to have to do that. But I think he has a potential to be a really good NHL defenseman, and I think he wants to be, and he's got he's got talent. So yeah, I, yeah, with the with the soft rebuild type thing that we were just talking about, or kind of mini rebuild, you know, I I also with a lot of these draft picks and a lot of these other young prospects. Trading up, I'd be interested in. Yep. I mean, if you if you spot someone earlier in the draft, and I mean, there's you know there's teams, you know, I mean, I don't know, like Ottawa's going to be in the lottery again. Obviously, I, I'm sure Buffalo will hold on to their number one overall if that's what they get because they're they're so lost they should keep their pick. But I mean, there's you know there's Kent Johnson there, you know, from Michigan. Maddie Benier is another Michigan guy. These are some centers that are in the draft that are probably going to go in the top ten. Yeah. And if you if you are able to nab one of those guys by moving a second round pick and or some other assets and trading Nicholas up Bodan and a second round pick, right? But yeah, but trade trade up trade up to get one of those because if you if you really want to start building down that middle, uh, yeah, you take can, a run at 
Or if you see guys that you think could be better than the guys move back and acquire more picks and still get your guy. Like right. they, they've got to yeah. be strategic in their drafting because they need, you know, we need, we need centers. And if you get a good center, but you also want to make sure you have more assets down the road. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to trade up, generally speaking, you, you've got to, you've got to pay to move up. And the Hawks, I, again, I just feel like, the rebuild is going to really start when, when Bowman starts moving some of those quote unquote sacred cows. Um, that's when you're going to see the, you know, the multiple first round picks and the ability to package and move up into the top five, et cetera. Right now they're just nipping around the fringes of a rebuild. And it's, I think the results are going to continue to be kind of just middle of the pack in a good year. Yeah. Um, until they do it. Um, but I, again, I'm not blaming Bowman for, for setting the strategy because the because the people above him are. It's yeah, not- oh, completely, to- no question. But I, you you do have to at some point, and I hate to think about this because I don't I don't want him moved for emotional reasons. Patrick Kane is my favorite Blackhawk ever, and I will say, and I grew up. Dennis Savard was my favorite player growing up. Kane has eclipsed that. I I think he will go down as the best Blackhawk of all time. They're running low on time to do something with him. Though. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's the thing. If, if we're talking about it, they, they will not be much better within his contract in, in that period. They are not going to be where they need to be before 2023. It's very hard to envision that. And if well, they're then, not, I, I mean, if, if he wants to leave Chicago and he walks away for nothing. Yeah. That's, well, yeah. that's, a, that's a colossal his, mistake. If he, if he can still and play. Then, and that, yeah, right. If he, if he is at this level in two years, Two years from now, if he's at this level, well, he would have been moved maybe at the deadline. They'll trade him. They they'll, will trade him at that point. They'll well, trade him at the deadline. But I mean, I just like either that or either that or you even talk to him next year about being a Blackhawk for life. I right. mean, at some point, they might even open up contract negotiations with him by this time next year. That's but, what I. That's what I was thinking, Andy. Like if if they haven't moved do, him, if, yeah. If he's if playing at this going. level, you can't give him to ten mil again. Yeah. Right. And, and the other thing is, is he, you know, he's got to think about it. Well, do I want to be a Blackhawk for life or do I want to go somewhere else and possibly win another Stanley Cup? Right. Because those right. thinking that, that, that the Hawks are going to just, you know, continue to rebuild around Patrick Kane and Patrick Kane's going to be scoring, you know, five goals in the last three games of, of a Western conference final um, in 2024 or 2025, you probably mm-hmm. need to put the, the crack pipe down. No, because um, it's just not going to work out that way. But yet that's what the Hawks are selling. Right. And it's again, I'm not blaming Bowman for it. Bowman's just to, just no. the messenger. And that's a big part of his job. He goes and he has these sit downs and he talks about rebuilds when they're not really rebuilding. Right. And anybody out there, folks, buyer beware, anybody out there on, on the Internet telling you the Hawks are rebuilding, they either don't know what they're talking about or they're lying on behalf of the organization. Right. They're not two, two years from today. Two years from today, the NHL playoffs will be in the first round. And I will put me chips on it right now that the Blackhawks will not be in it. And Patrick Kane will not be in a Blackhawk jersey. It's quite possible. That is, that, Andy, that is really quite possible. I mean, I hesitate to say, because you just never know. I mean, right. Kirby Doc could, like, you know, turn into the next Gordy Howe in the next, in the next two years. I mean, it could happen, you know. And cool. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> um, it probably will take more than that. But, really again... It. I mean, they could roll. They could roll a lot of sevens and elevens the next couple of years, and all, and things could go right for them. And and uh, but I kind of agree. I think I just think that this the team overperformed early in the year. Lately, they I, I think Andy, you told me last week they're like five, ten, and one in their last oh, sixteen yeah. games. Yeah, since and, since March first, they've been yeah, and they dropped five in a row at one point yeah. in that stretch. Not so good. It's 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 you know, and and so again, I think. What Bowman did was good. The thing is, though, it's 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 kind of unambitious what he did. It's it was clever, but he stayed within this very narrow little guardrail of not moving any big assets, just moving up some junk and getting some some lottery tickets back. And and I mean, I mean, when I say lottery tickets, I mean like literally Powerball tickets, where your odds are not great of winning. You know, so. Um, but you give, I give him credit because he's, he's playing the hand that he, he's being dealt from above, you know, right. go Sean, what do you got? What do you think? Andy and I have been kind of jabbering here. Well, yeah, so I've been... no, you guys are totally, <laughs> you're totally good. So, um, Andy had said that maybe 
Patrick Kane will be a Blackhawk for life. And that, that started getting me thinking here that maybe in two years, maybe they do start that contract negotiate with, with him because what are they going to, ha- like, if they're not going to full on rebuild, they're literally only going to have Patrick Kane to go forward with to sell tickets. Like right. if that's the ultimate goal, then Patrick Kane has to be a part of the future because right now he's the draw. You don't have Jonathan Taves. You probably never, unfortunately, hopefully not, but you're probably never going to get Jonathan Taves back. Brent Seabrook's already gone. Corey Crawford's gone. Duncan Keith is a freak of nature, but he won't be playing in Chicago in three or four years. It's just not going to happen. Why would he do that to himself? So Patrick Kane, the face of the franchise, is still going to be your ticket seller. You're still going to want, like, I'm going to want to take my nephew, who's a year old, going to go see Patrick Kane in three or four years before he retires. Even if he doesn't remember it, I can say he was there. And that's what's going to sell tickets. So maybe that's the play. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think they're hoping that Debrinkit will, you know, Debrinkit and Kubelik and Doc and Boakvist will, um, you know, step up and become more of a draw, um, you know, at, at, and as Kane's light flickers and fades, uh, you know, these other guys will step up and do that. But for the next couple of years, honestly, if they trade Patrick Kane, here's the thing. It sends a really clear message. This is a rebuild now. Yeah. And you are going to see ticket sales plummet. You're going to see sponsors head for the door, but you're also, you would also see significant return and significant assets yeah. for the future, as opposed to people getting all, you know, crazy about a second round draft pick. Right. Um, well, so it's, and- And they've got to weigh it out right now. Like the championship windows closed. So like that was that they were the hottest ticket in town and now they're going, they're trending downward anyways. If, if you're already heading that direction, why not just go all the way to the bottom and try to work your way back up? I mean, again, we we don't know the economics around it. I mean, I don't money, money, money. We don't know, but uh, the assumption is like rebuilds could also go kaboom. I mean, look at Buffalo, look at poor Buffalo. Well, and look at Edmonton until they got Connor <laughs> McDavid. Edmonton, yeah. how many overall number one picks did Edmonton know. have until they? I mean, sometimes rebuilds don't actually work. You know? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I think what I think what happened in Detroit is Detroit. You know, not to say Ken Holland was a bad GM, but I think Detroit hired Steve Eiserman for more than the fact that he was a former Red Wing. I think they hired Steve Eiserman because they saw what he did in Tampa, and right. you know, Steve Eiserman's stamp is on that team today. Oh, um, for sure. And, and I think. You know, what you do is if you're going to rebuild, you go out and you hire a guy who can, who can rebuild as your, as your president or GM. And, you know, maybe they, they ultimately believe Stan Bowman is that guy. Great. But, the, but then you get, but then you got to do it and you, you stop, you know, dancing around it and calling it something it's not. And, you know, just trying to sell tickets in the short term. Um, because, because I, I mean, Detroit's a great example because Detroit kind of did this for years they held on to Zetterberg and they held on to Franzen and they kept help, they kept selling Danny to Kaiser and they kept selling uh, Andreas Athanasiu. Yeah. Um, easy for me to say. Tatar. Um, to Tomas yeah. Tatar. They kept selling these guys and they, they just were mediocre for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden they started to suck. Yeah. Well, Datsu took, took off. That didn't help. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So, well, that, that's us with Marion Hosa, right? Right. Team. Team's yeah. never been the same. Has right. never been the same. Right. right. And and Nicholas Jomerson around that time too. And, yep. and they have they've not replaced him. And and uh so again, we've kind of beat this to death tonight, but I think you gotta look at the trade deadline, I think, within the context of what the team, the organization is trying to do right now. And um I'll, I'll be the first to say it. I think Stan Bowman played his hand as well as possible. The problem yep. is what the hand he was given to play by his, his owner is it's, it's kind of, it's kind of concerning in light of the fact that they're not as good as some of you guys think, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it wasn't allowed to play yeah. his pocket ace. Right. Right. So um, anyway, we'll, 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 I'm sure we'll be talking about this more. Uh, Andy, I know you got a split. Um, I, we've kept it to one topic tonight. Um, you guys have anything, any last thoughts? No, good show. Good chatter. Love the trade deadline. Yeah. Really, I, 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 what I really want to do now is fast forward to the draft. Um, I need, let's just let's cancel. The rest of the <laughs> yeah. I, that, be a the, lot of the draft and the expansion draft are the two big, uh, I, I like the off season, just looking at, you know, free agency, 
who deals. I love that stuff. That's, that's, I love that stuff too, Andy. I'm right there with you. So um, I will, JJ, I'll give credit to your guy um, throwing the no hitter the other night. Uh, yeah, um, that was yeah. a pretty incredible story coming off uh, being waived, get having Tommy John surgery, yeah, being wa- waived by the White Sox, and then re sign on a one year deal for three million. And yeah. then Carlos Rodon throwing a no hitter and sh- yeah. should have thrown a perfecto. So I think, well, um, yeah, he'll be buying his first baseman a few dinners for a while. That that was a hell of a play in that ninth inning. Yeah, you know, well, I don't know if you all saw that. Yeah, I saw. I, I watched the. I'm not a White Sox fan by trade. No, I'm not either. But, but um, I will respect North, North baseball. Side, North side. Well, all I am. I am a White Sox oh, fan. Oh, man, that and uh, I just. I will just say this. I think the Sox have had uh, some fits and starts to start the season, but I. I feel like um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things to be excited about too with this team, especially as they get healthy again and Anderson gets back and. Luis Robert is back and uh, Kopech looks phenomenal. Yeah, you know? that guy, that guy throws smoke. He yeah, throws smoke. and uh, so, so yes, yeah, so that's our brief um, digression. That's our, that's our White Sox corner for the night. Ooh, that's tough. Yeah, I, I didn't have a Cubs corner, I had a White Sox corner. Cubs so. corner. I'll, I'll do Cubs corner. I'll do, or maybe we'll, we'll, since I'm out here in the East, maybe we'll do the other Sox corner. And if you don't like it, go back to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Southie and beat up some smart kids. All right. <laughs> All right, let's let's wind this thing up. We've we've devolved into sheer chaos. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, thank you for joining us tonight on the Raincast. We uh, we really appreciate you guys who uh, stick with us. Rate us and review us on uh, iTunes. Um, and uh, thank you to our sponsors, BuckHockey.com, D-U-C-K-H-C-K-Y.com. Get that ten percent off discount code with the Rink T H E R I N K at puckhockey.com uh buy some of that rink gear it's good looking stuff um andy on is up on the twitter at andy campbell 16 sean is you you're, you're gonna have to spell it because it's I d-i-e-e-s-a-l three four two six i didn't feel like i was worthy of the e back in the day for diesel so that's why it's an a oh, is this some I kind of deference to Vin diesel well, very worthy of the no um very worthy <laughs> i was a, a chubbier distance runner and uh my right. teammates called me shack diesel running yeah. downhill once <laughs> like, i'm gonna call you foosh nickens from now on and uh i i uh rattled off uh, a pr in the 10k running basically the same speed the entire race the same it was literally the same split it was like diesel. 70 71 71 71 the whole race so. you've earned it you've earned diesel that's that's a yeah. good nickname for i you. like it um, I am at Jekyll at J A E C K E L. You know uh, all of our social media uh, presences at, at the rink, at the Rinkcast, at the Rink Store. Um, uh, our friend uh, at Puck and Hostel, Gatekeeper, follow him as well. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, um, we will see you next time on the Rink. <laughs>